Hello lovely people, I'm Kay3N and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video I'm going to darn a sock. Um, I hand knit socks, I only wear my own hand knitted socks and most of the socks I make are scrappy. Um, I use leftovers from you know other socks that I've made for people with yarn that I've bought um, and people who make socks sometimes kindly give me their leftovers if they're not makers of scrappy socks. So here's a pair of mine and when I say pair they're kind of a fraternal pair rather than actual identical twins. And one of them has got a little hole in the heel. So I'm going to darn it and darn it. Um, the other one actually is getting a bit thin in the heel. I'll just show you quickly. Do you see there? There's not actual holes yet, but I think I will darn cat hair. Sorry, it gets everywhere. Um, I think I will darn that as well. But um, for this video, I'll darn the, the hole. But the principles the same. So do you know if you have any kinds of socks, but especially hand knitted ones that someone's taken a lot of time and care to make, do assess every now and then um, if they're starting to wear thin and darn them before the hole arrives. So what you'll need is a pair of scissors. You'll need something to darn over. I've got this vintage darning mushroom, um, which has got a removable cap in which you can keep your darning needle. Um, and then the needle that you'll need is with a big eye and a blunt tip. And just get a lid back on. You have to push it on tight or sometimes the cap comes off mid-darn. If you don't have a darning mushroom, which you may not, there's also darning eggs, but you could use other things. Um, anything, this is a little jar which has got my homemade lip balm in. Um, anything like this, you know, just a little firm surface that you can get up inside your cloth that you can stitch against. Some people use a tennis ball or, you know, a little rubber ball of some kind. I hear people say light bulbs, but that scares me because, you know, if it breaks. Um, I've also seen people use baseball bats, you know, the end of a baseball bat. So you might have to be a bit creative and go and look around your home and see what you might have. Um, and then the final thing you'll need is something to darn with. Now this is my little tin of small scraps of yarn because I'm a sock knitter. I have a lot of sock yarn leftovers. If you don't have leftover sock yarn, you could use something like um, a cotton embroidery floss or um, you know, a, a sewing cotton of some kind. Although ideally you want to use the same fibre that the socks are made of, but it's better than nothing. Um, you want to get the thickness about the same as the uh, material that the socks were made of as well. Now I don't do invisible darning. If I've darned, I like people to see that I've darned. So I just choose bright colours, contrasting colours. Um, and I'm, so I'm just going to pick a bit out. Let's have this bit. And lengthwise, I go for quite a long length. So this is probably, let's just put that to one side. This bit of yarn is probably, what, about 30 inches long or so. Um, and then what I do is I thread it onto my needle, which is easiest to fold over the end, um, double, pull it off like that, and then put it through rather than trying to thread the fluffy end through. And then I don't pull that all the way through because when I go into the sock, I leave a long tail hanging, darn with this end, and then I go back and darn with the other end. I'll show you. Um, you do not want to make knots because they're not nice under your feet. So I'm gonna put my mushroom in my heel. I hope the camera's at a good height so you can see what I'm doing, but not so that it goes out of focus. So my mushroom's in there, I want to have a look, because obviously there's this big hole, and there's a smaller hole here, but I want to be sure that I go into all the surrounding area where it's worn thin. So can you see up there, a little row of threads between that two row of stitches? It's thin all the way up till about there. So I want to go a good eighth of an inch or so into the good stuff. And then round here it's still quite sturdy, but I'd come about a quarter of an inch round away from that hole. Here it's still good stuff, so still a quarter of an inch away from the hole. And here it goes thin again, so I want to go well into the good stuff because I'm going to provide a, a sort of scaffolding, if you like, for my darning to sit on. So I'm gonna kind of visualize an area here, and then I'm going to come in somewhere at the side. Let's say I come in here, and I'm in the good stuff. 
and I'm going to pull through and then I'm going to leave quite a long tail there and then I'm going to make the first line of stitching going across the knitted lines. So I'm just sewing in and out making stitches actually I'm going about the same length as the um, you know as the two lines that make the knit stitch. If you're not a knitter and you don't know what I mean you see that there's two kind of ridges per per stitch. I have to wiggle the blunt needle through a little bit like that. Whoops, come on, behave yourself. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit hampered by the light that's pressed up against my forehead. <laughs> so there you go. So you just pull until it's, you just start to see your tail move and then stop pulling. Get that tail out of the way for now. And then turn it round. And then again, you want to make sure that you're really in the good stuff here. And so I'm going to go in again and then I'm going to jump across slightly up through two loops of the of the knitted stitch. I don't ever go through one loop because that's not sturdy enough to hold it. And then just gently, you don't want to pull it tight. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing coming back the other way. And this time I'm going to go, I'm going to try and stagger my stitches somewhat with that first row and I'm probably about an eighth of an inch away. And you can take a few stitches at a time or one stitch at a time, whatever seems um, right. So in order to stagger here, I'm going to jump three loops of my knit and go in there. And then so I'm coming up there and it doesn't matter if these are big because we're going to go over them again in a minute. And then I'm going to come out next to where I went in there somewhere. Oops. You see I've got a long loop there but that doesn't matter because we'll get it when we come back the other way. And I'm going to turn and come back and do the same thing again in the other direction. So go in behind two loops of the knit and then come up. So I'm just weaving in and out, making sure I'm getting at least two ridges as I go. <clears throat> and some people will knit, uh, sorry, knit, will stitch a, a line of running stitch right around the area um, and then work within that. I mean that's, I've never done that, I'm, this is the way my granny showed me so this is the way I do it but you could experiment with that if that was something you know or if that's maybe something you do already. Um, I don't think this is wrong the way I'm doing it, it's just the way I do it. The other thing I like to do as well is when I get to this end is go behind a different, I sort of stagger. So if you keep going behind that same line of knitting there every time, you're putting all the tension on that one place. So this time I'm going to jump one line of knitting further and then come back to go back the other way. So do you see I've staggered that edge there? And then the same thing again. And it's, you know, it's such a wonderful thing to do. I think it's very satisfying. I'm almost pleased when, when there's a hole in my sock. Um, even my dad could darn a sock, and my dad was not a sewer. On this side as well, I'm going to come one bit further. So it's just, you know, keep being aware of the of the the damage, the hole, the cl in the cl in the fabric, and um, just assessing what you might need to do. Oops. Um, you know, to fix it. And don't pull too tight here. You see that little loop that's going around there. I don't want to pull anything out of shape. Um, for one thing, it puts strain on the fabric, like I said, but also it can then feel uncomfortable under your foot. Um, another thing about darning is some people will say, turn it inside out and darn on the inside. And that's more to do with trying to make it invisible um, and I've never done that and the other reason apart from the fact that I like to see my darning is um, that you can f you, you feel it more I think if you if you darn on the inside. So here I'm going to jump over that line again because that's a stagger. And um, 
but sometimes the wool gets twisted so you just want to do you see I'm just twisting it slightly so that it behaves itself so now I'm going to come up to the hole you know the actual hole so here I'm going to um, I think I can go in and out once more I'm going to go in and I'm going to jump over the hole and then come leave a line of stitching the other side and then come in at the other side of the hole and then here you really want to just pay a bit of attention to your tension attention to your tension so you keep it round your egg some people or your mushroom some people if it's a mushroom like to put an elastic band or a hair band or something around to keep it you know firm you can do that if that's easier for you but you don't want to pull that hole closed with the stitch what you're doing is that that hole is represents an area of cloth that's worn away or, or an area of yarn that's worn away so you need to fill it back in don't try and pull it closed hope I'm staying in shot I do keep checking Apologies if you can hear the dog snoring behind me. <clears throat> She's very bored by sock darning apparently. But she doesn't wear socks, so... And you see that my rows of stitching are about eighth of an inch apart. There or thereabouts. Jump over. In and out. And I'm not super precise about it in terms of the look of it. It's more about making sure that it's sturdy enough, you know, that it will extend the life of my sock. And I have some socks. Um, I should have brought my oldest pair to show you, actually, that are darned multiple times. The darns are darned. <laughs> because it's, you know, it's not only is it a thrifty thing to do and also uh, you know a sustainable thing to do there's something satisfying in having mended something I think you know not everybody will agree with me of course but that's one of the reasons I like to do it it's kind of like when you make something there's a, that satisfaction in having made a thing there's a similar satisfaction in mending a thing. So now I'm past the hole there. Now looking at that, I've got a bit of too much gap there. So I'm going to sneak in there, come up there, and put in another another um, strand in between. You see, this is <laughs> intuitive turning. <laughs> in other words, I made a, not a mistake, that's too strong a word. I assessed and decided it needed another strand. So now I'm going to do a couple more rows of um, stitching through the knit that's that side of the hole, although this is quite sturdy, but still. It's better to darn out too far than not far enough. Here I'm in where I did my heel decreases. If you're a knitter and you're curious about how I make my socks, I go toe up so I, and I knit them two at a time on a long circular needle because there's a thing called second sock syndrome where you make one sock and then you don't feel like making the second one. Um, so I do them two at a time. Um, I start at the toe uh, I don't, and I do my heel last and it's not a true what they call an afterthought heel because I mark where the heel's going to go. And then I go back and um, put the heel in when I've knitted a, a long tube. I don't know if ever I will do a sock knitting video or it will be a series of videos. Because I'm really here all about cloth and, and slow stitching. But, you know, never say never. I might do. If enough of you shout at me and say that's something you'd like, perhaps we will do some sock knitting on this channel. And if you're new here, um, please do have a look at the other things that are going on. Lots of slow stitching projects, tutorials to make various things, um, and so forth. Anyway, so that's my pass finished that way, and this thread is now a bit small to go further with. So I'm just going to simply weave it in through what I've just darned. Just a little way, and I usually just go in one direction a little way, sort of a few stitches in and out, and then I come back in another direction 
sort of against what I just did. And I, nothing really ever comes out because certainly once you wear it or once you wash it, it kind of felts a little bit. And just snip it. And I don't snip it right against the cloth. I leave a tiny, sorry, fabric. Is it all right to call it cloth when it's, I suppose it is. I always call cloth, cloth, you know. I don't really say fabric very much. So there we go. You see I left a tiny tail just so it doesn't pull completely out until it settles into place. Now I'm going to thread my other end that I left onto my needle and then I'm going to work with that. So now I'm going to just do the same thing but in the other direction. Um, so I'm going to come in here somewhere and this time my stitches where I'm where they're stitches you know we'll deal with these when we get there I'm going to more or less kind of try and weave under and over them but it doesn't really matter too much and I'll look as I go and if there's a stitch that's a bit big like that there I might sort of line myself up so that I end up going over the top of that stitch that's just really for aesthetics and maybe also so it doesn't catch on anything And the same thing when you get to the other side. You want to make sure that you're in sturdy stuff, unworn stuff, before you turn. And then make sure you take at least two strands of the knit before you come back the other way. Sorry, I really can feel myself pulling it towards me all the time. And I'm just going to tension that slightly because it's a little bit loose. And go in. And come back the other way and twist my yarn slightly. Now you see here, I'm, this line of knitting hasn't had stitching over it at all, so I'm going to do stitching over it. I really think this is in the whole ethos of slow stitch, which if you're a regular or you know if you follow anybody else who's doing slow stitching, you might have heard about before about the mindfulness of the task and looking at what you're doing and seeing what, how the, the, the thing reacts to it and then you respond to that. It's like you're having a conversation with the thing, with the thing that you're doing or mending or making. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to jump across a little bit underneath like that. Oops. and then come back the other way. So ideally, where, where I've gone over that stitch, this time I'll go under, but that's ideally, as long as you're kind of doing a weaving motion at this point, when you're still in, you know, some structure of sockness, let's call it, you're, um, it's not critically important. And if you make your first pass all round and you look back and you think, well, I didn't really do enough there, you can always go back in and do a bit more. You want to, you don't want it to get too super bulky because you'll feel it. Your your ideal aim for comfort is that it represent um, represents what's the word resembles the um, you know the original um, the rest of the sock but it will sort of bed down with wear. <laughs> Unless you're super sensitive. I mean, some people are super sensitive and feel things, you know. You know, the story of the princess and the pea. You know that fairy story? Where it was said that in order to um, assess whether a person was a princess or a regular, a regular girl, um, that came through sensitivity and the princess in the princess and the pea could feel a pea under I don't know how many mattresses and that's how they knew she was a princess. So I'm just going to weave back the other way. And this is something you can do when you're watching television or you know, just sitting in the car waiting for Somebody to come out of somewhere, I've done it. <laughs> I have a little um, 
I have a Japanese, I have a few Japanese rice bags. There are videos, there's a video how to make them, if you don't know. Um, they are lovely for knitting projects, little drawstring bag. Um, they're lovely for sock knitting projects. And I also have one where I put um, socks that require mending. And that's where my dining mushroom lives. And um, a little pocket in it full of some threads. So then people in the family know because they all wear hand knitted socks. Although I'm the only one who wears them exclusively. They know that if they have a sock with a hole, if they put it in that bag at one point, it'll be mended. As if by magic, by me. You see, and I, I, I really like the look of that. I just, you know, you might not, in which case you can use the same colour and try and be more invisible about it. But especially in the um, nature of my scrappy socks, I just think it, it fits with the whole look. See here I'm now into, I've still got some sock left there, but that's quite a long loop there. So I'm going to go over it and under it. And we, now you, when you get into the hole where there's no sock anymore, it's really more weaving than sewing. But I'm going to have to get another bit of wool. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm just going to weave my tail in somewhere. Sorry, I'm pulling it towards me again. I hope I'm staying in shot. Over there, somewhere over there, and then back on itself. That's how I do it when I'm knitting as well. I always then come back on, on itself. I just think it's more secure. And cut that again, leaving a tiny little tail. Sorry, I headbutted you. And I need another bit. Let's get this bit it's about the right length. And um, I'll do the same thing again. Um, shall I? Yeah, I'll do the same thing again. I just think it, it's... I prefer to weave the tail in at the end. So if you take a long bit and only go halfway through with it... Um, I want to come up somewhere there. Actually, I'm going to come in this direction. I'm just thinking ahead and then my tail will be left over here where I still need to do. I don't know if it'll make any... Let's leave a, more of a tail. Do you see, if you leave at least that, you've got enough there to come back and weave that in. And I'd rather do that at the end than do it now. I don't know. I don't know how what difference that really makes. It's just the way I do it. I'm just here to show you the way I do it. And if you're already a sock darner, then... You know, feel free to do you, as always. Um, but maybe you can get something from this. We can all share our experiences of how we do things. So now I'm weaving under and over and under and over. And then where you've gone... Again, I'll jump across a couple of rows of knitting. And where you've gone over on that pass, then the ideal again is to go under on your return pass. And while I'm here, you know, I'm not yet in the actual hole, still not there. It's not as critical. And all the time making sure I don't pull it too tight, that I just tension it so that it and, you know, I'm keeping this pulled down. If you've got hand issues at all, then the, probably the rubber band or um, hair tie around the darning mushroom would help, maybe. And now I've realised I'm doing grey on grey, but it'll turn green in a minute. And actually, I'm going grey and blue, so I can't actually see it now. I'm sorry, that was maybe not the right colour to choose you to be able to see. So now I've got my little thread there where I wove my end in, but I'm not going to bother about that. I'm just going to treat it as if it was a normal stitch. Stop pulling it towards you, Catherine. The people can't see if you do that. And there I split the yarn, which is probably naughty, but 
I don't think the world will end if I leave it like that. So over, under, over, under. And it's not something to stress about the over, under. As long as you kind of don't end up with great big long stitches that aren't covered, then, you know, the goal is to fill the hole in in a sturdy way. And um, f to me as well, that it's pleasing to look at. And I don't mind if it's a little bit wonky. <laughs> If you've been here for any length of time, you will know that already. So, <clears throat> and I've got a couple more lines to do and then I'm up to the actual hole. And all the time you see I'm checking with my thumb that it's not lumpy or bumpy anywhere and that it's reasonably smooth in case a sock princess has to wear it. I, need to... I have been in there, it's just that it's the same colour. In and out and in and out. Behind a whole row of stitching or two ridges and over. It's beginning to turn green. So now I need to go over and under and over and under like that. And here I'm to my loop so I'm going to go over, under, over and then under there somewhere and then over, under and then back the other way. I'm just going to make sure I trap that cross thread down. Come on, behave yourself when all the people are watching. So there I want to go over, I want to do quite a big jump so that I end up under that. Under, over, under, over, and then under. And now in the hole there, you know, the actual hole, I always then take my needle and push all that across so that it stays as snug as possible. And then over, under, over, under, and into the good stuff. And back the other way. And now I'm at the actual hole, I'm just being especially careful with the tension as well. Because there's not much to push against. <clears throat> and... You guessed it, over, under. <laughs> A lovely rhythm to darning. It's a shame the hole's so small. I, lo I love it when there's a great big expansive hole and then you can really play with the with the weaving and change colours. And There's an English textile artist called Celia Pym um, who does visible mending. On, and you can do this on everything, by the way, not you know anything woolly, not only socks, do it on jumpers. My husband's got a couple of Icelandic jumpers that I've made for him that he wears. We live in the countryside and, you know, he's chopping wood or driving the tractor around, stuff like that. And both of his elbows are well darned. Um, yeah, so have a look at Celia Pym. I'll see if, I, th I know she's on Instagram, I'll see if she's got a website or something for those of you that don't know her and put a link in the description. But she, her visible mending is artistry. It's not this. It's not this that I'm doing. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, probably need to get a new bit. So I'm going to bury that again. Over, 
I didn't come back the other way. That was naughty. Well, I'll leave that and do it in a minute and bury this other end. And this is long enough to do a couple of lines of darn first. So, Now there, there's my hole, do you see, and if I push the stitches to one side I can still see my mushroom. So I want to cram in another row into the actual hole. Maybe even two other rows. Well, I've got enough of this to come back the other way again. Heading back in that direction. Again, pushing it down, making sure it's nice and smooth or, you know, as smooth as it can be. I can just about squeeze another thread in there. There we go. And then I'll weave this in. that one in. And um, I think I already wove it one way so that's enough. I just need to do a tiny bit more there but you know, let's have this bit. See these, I'd always keep these bits if you're a, a knitter, especially if you're a sock knitter. And that if they're too short to put in a scrappy sock. And in my scrappy socks, I would probably use that even for a stripe, that little bit. So, but then anything smaller than that stays for the darning. So I'm going to come up from here somewhere, I think. So that my tail's over there. I'm not sure I'll need um, all of this, but we'll see. So under, over, under, over. It's just adding another colour as well. So it's a bit long, I had to pull my arm over into outer space. My grandmother, when she taught me to darn, of course it was with um, the same colour and neat and as even as possible. <laughs> I don't know what she'd make of that if she saw that now. I think she'd probably still be proud of me for still darning. Um, I think it's... Maybe it's... I don't know if it's having a revival or if it was always there. And, you know, I know many of you are probably already darning. I know many of the people who follow my weekly slow stitch project and many of the people in the private Facebook group and people I see on Instagram and so on are, are well aware of visible mending as a thing. It's not only darning, it's also patching your clothes and so on, but in a visible way. Kind of making an art of it. It's kind of making an art of it and at the same time it's saying I was here. I, I I did something, you know. It's not hiding your work. It's if I even sew a button on one of my husband's shirts, I will sew on. And even if it's a business shirt, I don't care. I will sew on a different button to the rest. It's just a little way of saying I was here. So I think I can just go up and down once more and then I think I'm good. I think my sock is good to go. That's far enough. 
<clears throat> and then what I would do on the other sock that I showed you, which is just worn and not hasn't got a hole in yet, I'm going to come up here because I see those two long strands here. I'm just going to go over those. Um, I'll do exactly the same thing, but I won't have to do that weavy thing in the middle because there's no actual hole. But I'll just assess the area that's worn and just stitch backwards and f you know in one in one direction backwards and forwards, and then go across in the other direction. And that will hopefully prevent a hole even from forming. All right. So just before I finish off this thread, I'm just going to have a look at that. Is that dense enough? I think so. That's dense enough. So all I need to do is weave this in somewhere into the body of it. Make sure I don't pull it too tightly. And then back in the other direction somewhere. Cut it off. And then I'll do the same with this other one. <clears throat> I might as well do it quickly. Just so you've seen the whole thing. You can, you know, you may have gone already. You may have seen the beginning and thought, yep, got it. <laughs> in which case, <laughs> in which case you've gone. <laughs> so there's no point in me speaking to you anymore at all. But if you're still here and you just like to, you know, I know some people like to see a finish. They don't like you to say, well, you get the idea, I'm off now. I'm going to finish it off camera. So by showing everything, um, either the people that have already got it and have gone aren't bothered and the people that wanted to see the whole thing have that option. There we go. That'll do. Pig. Snip that off. Those bits are a bit short so they'll go. I've got another little basket of thread ends and tiny scraps of cloth and put them in there and then they'll come in, they'll stuff something or I don't know, they'll be couched on as to something in my slow stitching or something of that kind. Try not to waste anything. So, um, My darning mushroom, there's a lady in the private Facebook group, one of my subscri subscribers called Francis. Hello Francis. Um, who has got one of these and I think she got it in the 70s and she wasn't aware and I think I was only aware because mine's quite loose and it came off, that the lid came off and you could keep needles in it. But anyway, she lives, I think, in Canada. We're now darning mushroom sisters. So anybody else has a darning mushroom like this and doesn't know that the lid comes off, or does know, please tell me in the comments and we can all be darning mushroom sisters. Or brothers. Or brothers. All right, so there's my heel. Um, inside it feels perfectly flat and fine. Um, and that's how I darn socks. So I hope that was useful and interesting to some of you. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching. And do let me know if you think that um, scrappy sock knitting might be something you'd be interested in um, for future videos. And uh, anyway, meanwhile, I look forward to you joining me next time for more cloth tales. Bye bye. <laughs>